Hello everyone, today we will be learning about bean anthracnose and its epidemiology. Under this topic, we will be looking at introduction and infection and symptoms, epidemiology of bean anthracnose, environmental requirement, survival, disease cycle, dispersal, and IPM control measures. Introduction Bean anthracnose is caused by Coleotrichum lindimuthianum. It belongs to the kingdom fungi. It has wide range of hosts, including varieties of beans, cowpea, peas, and gram. It is a major disease of common beans, Physiolus vulgaris. Production is reduced because of poor seed germination, poor seedling vigor, and low yields. Basically, the loss can occur both in terms of quality and quantity. Seed losses in temperate regions have been recorded up to 90% and more under climatic conditions that are favorable to the disease. Marketing losses are attributed to seed spots and blemishes, which lower their quality rating and salability. Bean infection and symptom and symptoms. Bean crop is vulnerable to bean anthracnose from seedling to maturity stage, depending on the environmental conditions. Figure one shows the symptoms on young seedlings, both on stem as well as the leaves. Figure two depicts black sunken spots on stem. Figure 3 illustrates anthracnose lesions on seedlings. On young seedlings, severely infected cotyledons senescence prematurely and growth of the plants is stunted. In advanced diseases, diseased areas may girdle the stem and kill the seedling. Later on, the spots become sunken and filled with the salmon-colored ooze. Symptoms on leaf. Lesions are most common on leaf petioles and on lower surfaces of leaves and leaf veins. Lesions have big red to purplish red discoloration. Some lesions of various sizes, black, brown, or purplish red margins develop around small veins. During the disease progression or during the advancement of the disease, vein necrosis occurs first, followed by wilting and bleaching of the tips, then it spreads to the margin and later on to the center of the blade. Figure 4 shows the symptoms on the underside of the leaves as linear dark brick red to black lesions on leaf veins. Symptoms on stems and pots. Symptoms first occur on the stems and later on it spreads to the pods. On stems, the lesion appears as dark brown eye spots, which develop longitudinally along the stems. On pods, small reddish brown, slightly sunken blemishes with distinct circular reddish brown lesions occur. They rapidly develop into large, dark sunken lesions. During moist periods, interior of the lesion may exude pink masses or spores. Severely affected pots may shrivel and usually carry infected seeds. Figure 5 illustrates the lesions on the pots, which are small reddish-brown, slightly sunken blemishes with distinct circular reddish-brown lesions. 6 also illustrates the dark sunken lesions on the pots. Figure 7 depicts the sunken lesions on pots showing spore production at the center, which looks pinkish in color. For seeds, the symptoms appear as brown to black blemishes and sunken lesions. Figure 8 depicts that. Epidemiology of bean anthracnose. Environmental requirement. They are favored by cool and wet weather conditions between 13 to 26 degrees Celsius with an optimum of 17 degrees Celsius. Remain relative humidity requirement is 92% or ever. Free moisture favor germination of the spores, initial infection, and also the spread of the pathogen. On seeing below 7 degrees Celsius and above 33 degrees Celsius, the disease development will not occur or it is minimized. Incubation period varies from four to nine days. And I hope from the previous presentation, you know the meaning of incubation period. Survival. In anthracnose pathogen can survive in infected seed and plant residues. It is mainly a seed-borne disease. 
can survive for at least two years in infected seeds and plant residues or in the soil. However, give, given a favorable environmental condition, it has been recorded to survive up to five years in the soil. Infected seeds are the major source of primary inoculum. Seeds also play an important role in long distance distribution of the pathogen. Disease cycle Primary inoculum and infection. The primary inoculum is seeds, and other times it's from the soil and crop residue. Primary infection occurs on the growing seedlings. Later on, secondary inoculum and infection occurs. Secondary inoculum are the spores that are being dispersed from the primary lesions to other healthy plants or plant parts. Secondary infection are the infections caused through secondary inoculum. Occurs many cycles in a season, hence it is no more damaging than the primary infection. And if you are not really clear on this, please go back to the first presentation. Life cycle of Colilo trichum lindimidianum occurs in two forms, both asexual as well as sexual stages. Asexual reproduction, development of fungal spore shows a biphasic behavior or two lifestyles, biotrope and saprophyte. Therefore, the fungus has been classified as hemibiotrope. Hemibiotrophic fungi combine both biotrophic and microtrophic strategies to feed themselves. In the initial phase, the feeding style is biotrophic. Hosts, the host immune system and cell death is actively suppressed, which allows the invasive hyphae to spread throughout the infected plant tissue because it has to take up the nutrients from the living host. Feeding occurs in necrotrophic phase, during which the pathogen secretes cell wall degrading enzymes and phytotoxins to induce host cell death, thereby helping them with necrotic phase. The life cycle of the pathogen occurs in both asexual and sexual stage. Asexual form, which is also known as anamorph stage, is depicted by the small circle. During this stage, the pathogen produces a cyvoli that erupts through the epidermis. A cyvolus is basically a fruiting body. During this stage, the conidiospores spores are exposed because of which the conidiospores spores escape or are being dispersed by water splashes, resulting in the secondary spread of the disease. Conidiospores spores lands on the healthy tissue of the plant, followed by germination of the spores, followed by penetration and invasion of the host tissue. During this stage, pathogen takes nutrients in biotrophic form. Later on, it secretes enzymes and toxins that can kill the cells of the plant tissue, switching to necrotrophic stage of feeding. The cycle continues in this manner in the anamorph or asexual phase. The sexual form of reproduction is also known as teleomorph stage, which is depicted by the large circle. In the sexual stage, the pathogen produces perithacium and SI, which produces ascospores, which then later on escapes and lands on the healthy tissue of the plant, and the cycle continues. However, the sexual phase rarely occurs under the field condition. Dispersal. The pathogen is dispersed through splash rain, wind blown rain, water, seed, insects, animals, and human beings. IPM control measures. Management of the pathogen can be done through combination of various management measures. One, cultural control measures. Use, use of anthracnose free seeds. Avoid any operations under wet, wet field conditions. Avoid unnecessary movements in the infected field. Maintain sanitation of the field. Practice crop rotation at least for two years. Use resident varieties, mulch, maintain proper spacing, practice sowing at the recommended date, avoid overhead irrigation, avoid packing slightly infected harvest, maintain sanitation in and around storage containers and or areas. 
physical control. Soil solarization with a plastic sheet for a month before the sowing of the crop is known to reduce the pathogen occurrences or disease development. A hot water seed treatment is also known to reduce the occurrences of the disease. This can be done by soaking at 17 to 22 degrees Celsius for 15 hours, followed by another soaking at 47 degrees Celsius for 25 minutes. However, a skilled person should be the one using this technique so that the seeds are not killed. Biological control. Trichoderma species are used as fire agent in controlling the pathogen. Trichoderma species are non-pathogenic fungi which are green in color. They are naturally found in soil, decaying wood, compost, roots and above ground plant organs. They have antifungal and plant growth stimulating effects. For example, Trichoderma variety is used as seed dip and soil trench. Trichoderma herzianum used as leaf treatment. Smearing infected seeds with the cultures of a combination of four species of trichoderma for about 15 minutes and then drying them overnight before sowing has significantly shown to inhibit infection of Cholidra trichum, Lindimuthianum and increased seed germination. The trichoderma species act against the pathogen by inhibiting the mycelial growth and spore germination and also by releasing volatile toxic metabolite compounds. Botanical extracts such as neem seed extract have been effectively used against the pathogen which prevents the germination and mycelial growth of the pathogen. Seed treatment and field spray using the extracts of Lausiana inermis is also known to significantly improve the seedling emergence and reduce incidence of wind anthracnose. Lausiana inermis is a hina plant. 4. Resistant varieties. Resistance is the most effective and efficient method of anthracnose management. However, this has been complicated by the presence of several forms of races of fungus and the fact that the plant's resistance to one race may be susceptible to another. Varieties must be tested where they are to be grown to determine the tolerance to locally prevalent races. 5. Chemical control. The follow application of fungicides may reduce the severity of the disease in the field. However, fungicides are not economical. You have already seen that pathogen has various races or stains which can overcome the effects of the fungicides. Mencotep seed treatment at the rate of 3 gram per kg seeds is recommended. Carbondism follow spray at the rate of 0.5 kg per hectare. The spraying of the fungicide has to be done at the right time. Spraying time for this pathogen is at, at the flower set, at the late flowering stage and at the pot field stages. These are the chemicals or the fungicides.